Hey there, and welcome to the daily podcast where wisdom smacks us with kisses or love taps. I'm Michelle Spiva, a wisdom strengthening coach, your host, and practical priestess of wisdom. Join us daily to gain wisdom and mental strength as we tackle innovative thinking, address emotional and behavioral life traps, and yes, provide you with some practical how-tos to wrap it all up. So settle in or crank up the speed 2x, whatever gets your mental processes firing as we dive in. Stay tuned. Wait a minute, what did you just say? You heard me. And since when do you believe this? I don't know. Where did you hear this? Well, it's all online. Everybody is talking about it. But what do you think about it? Hey, this is Michelle Spiva, your practical priestess of wisdom. And I want to welcome you to today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. So join me on the flip as we really get into it. You don't want to miss this one. I should have named it a wisdom money skill set. But anyway, join me as we talk about how to get to the heart of a matter. I'll see you on the flip. It's going to be good. So today we're talking about how to get to the heart of the matter. And I'm going to just say this, that people who are able to do this are very powerful. And they are some of the richest and wealthiest and most prosperous people um, on the earth. And that is because they have learned how to become problem solvers, thought leaders, cultural influencers, media mavens, and even political pundits. You see, they're able to get to the heart of a matter. And the reason why I didn't call this how to research or how to critically think is because it takes all of that stuff, all of the cerebral stuff, and it also, uh, they are very good at managing the emotions, whether they're playing you like a maestro to get you to feel how they want or to elicit a certain response or just to be provocative to whomever. They all, they never, never ignore the emotional side of what it is that they do, right? So they are able, and this is to me a, a learnable skill, and I see we're going to need more of these types of people. And so they can be made. and. They're able to make sense of the drama. They're able to put in perspective polarizing arguments. You know the ones that usually revolve about, around race, religion, sex, or money. They're actually very good at untangling situational entanglements. Um, and they are very good at being able to articulate in a way where the masses understand their meaning without ambiguity. And so it becomes a surefire way to riches. If you can master this and you can and you can handle being in the spotlight and doing this, then it's a superpower. You see, we we have them all over the place and we are we have become addicted to the taste of them, whether they be talking show, um, talking heads or talk show host, or even opinion and advice givers on YouTube. We flock to them. The people (laughs) are able to feel a little more solidified when they're able to get a lot of uh, different viewpoints. Well, on whatever side of an issue they stand on, I should say. And uh, the people masses, they just like to hear, you know, the different as well as the affirming to what they believe. And they like for it to be well presented and thought out. And they like for it to deal with current events, hot topics, and maybe even hot takes. You have people who have shot up in the stratosphere because they are able to, to give you a hot take, and they are able to tell you definitively without shuddering what they feel. Uh, At this particular time of recording, a rapper who proved this 
um, in her own way. Cardi B shot up and started speaking her mind and saying what she wants. And and (laughs) not even, what, two, three years later, she's actually thinking about possibly running for Congress. And people are like, run, you know. And it is because she is able to get to the heart of a matter and articulate it in her own way where her particular followers, her audience, her market understand and love her. And they thank her for it because it helps them to better form their beliefs. Now, of course, you're definitely going to have parents. And that's what the little take on in the A part was all about. Those people that all they do is they listen to other people and they just become really good at parroting and mimicking what other people say. And they can string them along together and sound somewhat well read, but upon closer inspection, they can't withstand and it starts to crumble because they don't have what it takes to uh, be the person generating that stuff. But if you keep listening today, I promise you, you won't be that person. No siree. You are going to have the skills or I'll say you'll have the knowledge of the skills that it takes to get to the heart of a matter. So if you're ready, let's get in, get into it. Okay. All right. So there are some things that I'm going to give you um, today as we have our little conversation like we normally do. And you know how we do it here. I'm going to list some skill sets, give you some for instances and give you something to ponder on. So the first thing is, is if you want to be able to get to the heart of the matter, and especially if you want to be able to do it in a way that benefits you financially or even notably, uh, you need to get into the habit of listening to and hearing brilliant thinkers who are able to express their thoughts in a straightforward manner. Now, I am not talking about uh, elocution. I mean, elect, uh, I'm not going to say the word. They pronounce their words real good, not like me. <laughs> I am not going to talk about it being where it's a polish and the Queen's English, if you know, it, that doesn't apply uh, over here in the US, but you know what I mean. It means that you're able to operate in a way that when you speak, you get your thought across, you're able to paint images on people's minds, and you're able to embrace uh, where they are while continuing to move them to an area where you are understood. And that's what we call persuasive, persuasive um, argument or or um, making, yeah, making a persuasive argument. And like I said, it starts by listening to people. You're going to need to also listen to people who are problematic and start to let it marble around in your mind where they might be coming from. Look at not only what is said, but where the possible uh, contributions came in to get them to this point. And if you can, this is not a uh, basic skill set. It takes, it takes some time and some advanced, um, um, advanced knowledge to be able to deem where the origins of something came from. And that is because usually when you're looking at the origins, you need to be well-read, well-versed, have a broad knowledge of different possible influences. Um, I think back to when I, I've talked to you about the book, um, How to Read literature like a professor. And one of the things that uh, the professor said is that a professor worth his salt is going to have to be well read over a large span because they use patterns, symbols, and um, <clears throat> excuse me, patterns, symbols, and metaphor to understand what is going on. And that's the same thing here. And so if this is not where you're going to just be like, oh, I'm going to listen to a few people. I'm going to queue up my motivational speak, you know, speeches on YouTube and I'm going to be ready for them. No, it actually does take some application of effort and being able to grow your understanding of what you're hearing. And that leads me to the next thing. Start to embrace the quotes of the greats um, who've proven the ability to move people to action and upgrade their emotions. You know, it's one thing to like a little quote here and there. It's another to look at the ones who uh, that prove themselves over time by by which when people look at that quote, they are still 
moved. And when I say moved, I mean moved, meaning that quote has the power to elevate or um, change their emotions and possibly get them to physically do something, to be activated to do something. And that is a power that is immortal. And so that's why I'm encouraging you to start listening to great and brilliant thinkers. And a lot of them, you're not going to agree with them. I just want you to say, if you only choose the ones that you agree with, you are shorting yourself. Because believe it or not, the very people that you don't agree with, you will start to hear what they espouse and what they spout out. You'll you'll hear it trickle into the people that you do like to hear. And you'll be amazed. Have you ever thought about how much of the stuff that you don't like from people who have been villainized over the, the centuries when you actually go and read about them and read what they said, how they thought about stuff? You can be like, but wait a minute. That's what Shirley down at the grocery store believes. How in the world is she? And yes, you'll start to see patterns. And this is part of that skill set learning that I'm going to encourage you to do. Now, let me just cut to the chase. Some of the key skill sets that you want to start focusing on. If you want to be able to get to the heart of a matter, when someone asks you, what do you think about this? And you're able to work it around in your mind fairly quickly and look at different possible viewpoints and then pick something that is insightful, that elevates someone's thinking or challenges challenges their thinking, persuades them to consider something they might not have, is able to command different angles. Yes, that is going to require that you have the following skill sets. And this is not an exhaustive list. But you'll need to have a really good skill set where you're able to research, data mine, have great critical thinking, thought processing for both personal and public consumption, and polished communication skills. Let me repeat those again. Your skill sets, minimum. If you're going to get to the heart of a matter and be known for that, research and data skills. Critical thinking. Thought processing on both a personal and a public consumption level and polished communication skills. So what do I mean by that? So for research, you need to understand relationships. And that means you're going to start to look for patterns. We've already talked about it before. We're going to be mentioning it again because one of the biggest things that you will use when trying to strip out all of the noise, all of the fluff and the um, accoutrement, you know, the, the pretty stuff to get down to the basics or the main thing. You will need to see patterns and uh, because patterns have a spell on them. They can uh, spell someone to not really see what's there. And once you can see them, then you can start moving past them or using them to give you even more insight. Sometimes patterns have fingerprints of who's really behind a message. And you can start to see, we'll talk about um, this a little bit more, but when you're, and, 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 and how to start unearthing hidden messages. So when you're doing your research, start with the main forward focused object or the theme as you should. But then, To start seeing these patterns, I want you to search for the objects, relationships to other things. And you can start with things that are are adjacent to it. Whether it seems like they are related or not, take a look at adjacent themes, adjacent objects, peoples, um, things that remind you of this. If you are looking at something and everybody's in a kerfuffle about it and it reminds you of something else that might not seem related, trust your gut. That is your critical thinking kicking in and starting to work and making synaptic choices to help you get to a point where you can paint a new story and control the angles that you can look at. And so the next thing is, is um, now data mining, data science, that's where you're able to take in a lot of information and boil it down. And that takes uh, not being so well versed in handling a lot of information as much as it does being able to get your mind so focused that you can follow a thread 
through a, uh, through a throng of people and not lose the thread. That's what it really means. And so when we talk about the data mining, don't lose the thread. Keep going. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about critically thinking through the data. When you critically think through the data, this is where you start to learn how to ask the right questions. Now, in a previous podcast, I talked about different types of questions that you need to be asking and being able to understand how to um, formulate your questions is it's not that hard. It's not where it's totally like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, ask these perfect questions. No, you're going to have to go through some trial and error. Just because you want to do something does not necessarily mean that it's just going to be like, here you go. No, you're going to have to learn how to ask questions that are uh, revealing, that are able to uh get new information in a brilliant and new way. You'll need to know how to ask questions that are objective, uh, questions that are passive. You'll need to uh, learn the different kinds of questions, whether they be investigative, declarative, and all of the others um, that it takes to do that. And one of the best and fastest ways to do that is to, you don't have to go to a, a Um, Ivy League school to do this, start looking at, no joke, how a parent interrogates their kid when they have an inkling that something is afoot, that they're not being totally honest with them or that something just isn't right. Start looking at how they they start stripping away at uh, the story that was told to them to, own, to start getting down to the story that is really there, how they they just go through it. And if you can't, you know, if you don't have um, ability to, to do that, then go and look at Columbo. Look at, um, and, and I know Columbo has been long gone, but trust me, just by, you know, seeing those seemingly weird questions, <laughs> When he asked them, and then, you know, when they come back, of course, he had a writing team, you know, doing this brilliance. But you can learn a lot of insight about how the questions that he asked almost always seem to appeal to be appear to be on the periphery instead of straight forward. But they were really getting at, you guessed it, the heart of the matter. Uh, reframing the way something is presented is another way that you can start to ask questions. And if you are familiar with something, start learning how to superimpose the skills that you have from something else onto this new way of looking at something because I'm trying to tell you, you're going to be amazed at how when you just change the orientation by which you um, apply your your critical thinking to something, the whole flower unfolds for you in a completely different way. And it's really almost like, it looks to me, it looks like magic when it happens. So when I started applying the way I would approach uh, revenue management to, to storytelling, to just different things, it forced me to start seeing things in a new and different way. And it all came by starting to, you guessed it, do those types of questions where it stripped away what was the way people wanted the information to be presented. And you'll be you'll be amazed at how many times when you start to do this, you'll be like, oh my gosh, this is a cover-up. And you know, it's not it's not gonna turn you into like a flaming um conspiracy theorist, but you you definitely will start to see changes in how you visualize. It will start I, the best way I can say it is it will start to reframe the filters that you bring to the table when you are assessing something. I've talked about it in, in previous podcasts when I talked about, you know, the heist being coded and um, how to decipher and how to use um, critical thinking to work through the information um, 
that has been presented and other things. Uh, I've talked about sleight of mind and uh, how to uh, work with um, what you have, understanding that everything is not necessarily uh, given to you and, and, you know, just being able to do that. So then after we talk about uh, the research and the critical thinking and asking uh, different kinds of questions, bringing uh, different industries, if you will, if that's a better way to think of it, uh, to um, investigate what you're looking at. The next thing is, is you want to be able to process it for personal level and public level consumption. Um, your findings, your your thoughts about it, what is starting to happen. And the best way to do this for the personal and the public consumption is because we are first individuals and then we are the crowd. And when I talk about uh, process, thought processing for the personal, meaning starting with what, it, what does it mean for you or for the person that it's affecting? And that means that you need to focus on the meaningful information, the information that gives whatever this is form, uh, gives it theme and, and gives it um, that part that people are willing to ingest and to uh, champion. And so focusing on the personal and the public consumption levels is is going to be something that is a skill set that you'll have to form because we're not usually taught how to think on the base level of me and then the upper level of all of us, not even we, all of us, the group. And it, it looks different. So whereas something for the individual looks totally honest and pure, something for the masses if done the same way, looks cruel. Um, Yes, you might be thinking, well, is she talking about universality? Possibly. (laughs) Uh, I'm not ready to go down that road. And plus, I don't have enough time to deal with that today. You know, I'm I'm not trying to say that, you know, the greatest good for the greatest amount of people, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the sacrifices or whatever. I am going to say this. And that is when you start focusing on the meaningful, It is going to lead you down the path of emotions. So that means, and this is where these people who get paid a lot of money to get to the heart of the matter, make they they make their money here because you have to be willing to home in on the emotions about and around that subject. You have to first learn how to use that 30,000 foot view approach to evaluate the emotions around the subject, the object or the person. And then you have to, Um, personalize it to the individual. So you have to look at it how, as how society in this time is uh, taking it, how the individual is taking it. And then this is the, where they make their money. You have to then project it into the future and imagine that you can tell whether or not it's going to age well. Because just because something is trending and uh, good today, does not mean that it's going to have a good lifespan. Can anybody say spiky hair in the 80s? Okay, (laughs) let me move on because we only have a few more minutes and I still have way more to give you. Um, So after the thought processing, you want to move into uh, the process of becoming polished in your communication skills. And let me just say this, anytime You take on anything of achievement, anything, any big thing, even with working through a polarizing argument that's, you know, trending or on topic, you need to have a process to work through it because without a process, you're just talking. mm -mm. And so here's the process to start working through it. So once you've done your research and you've critically thought about it, you've gathered enough information to start looking for the meaningful information What does this mean to the masses and to the person? And will it age well, putting it out into the future? Then you want to discover, and this is is deep, discover, if, if applicable, who powers the perceptions, who funds the message, or who promotes the um, emotions, and what do they get out of it? You see, usually when something is unleashed in the wild, if you will, and has everybody talking and chattering and tittering, there are usually powerful forces behind it. And no, 
I am not talking about those deep, um, formless voids. I am really talking about real institutions, real folks. It is, it's, it's blaringly obvious that when massive things happen to affect a lot of people to get folks up in arms, there is something or someone or a group of someone's fueling that message. They are skewing the perceptions of the masses and they are promoting the emotions to get what they want. Sometimes it's the hide the birdie where they have you so focused on that uh, so that they can do what they want while you're focused on the kerfuffle up front. And the people who are able to get to the heart of the matter understand this and they know to follow the power thread. And once you follow that power thread, turn that into knowledge to look for, you guessed it, your patterns, your symbols, your metaphors. And this is where it gets to be real and you really earn your money. And that is you look for the codes. You start to understand what the codes mean for the people in the know. That is the hidden messages. Yes, it's real, people. Yes, it's really real. And it's not about, woo, you know, controversial stuff. It really is. Uh, Overton window, uh, if you're not familiar with that, we've talked about it many times on the podcast. The Overton window is this very thing, but it's used in the political arena. So when you want to move the public thought to something that might seem controversial or a little bit too out there, you do something, you over shoot way over to the farcical and have people um, so uh, enraged and polarized over the farcical so that when you want to get what you originally wanted done, you back it back down, that now becomes the new normal and it becomes palatable to the people where they might not have ever accepted that if you had just stopped there. It's a negotiation uh, plea, except for if you're except for negotiating for a contract, you're negotiating people's emotions and their thoughts and feelings. Okay. So turning what you know, the meaningful, who's in power, what are um, the main focuses of the object, the theme, what's behind it, what's the hidden knowledge, and you're turning that into knowledge, then you want to articulate it, wh- articulate what it means to you. It's not enough to know what everybody else thinks about it. You need to settle on what it means to you because yes, you can definitely be a great observer, but the people who really shine in this are those who know what the... Um, what the masses and the individual thinks, but then they also have a personal investment in it. And that's what people really like. When you're able to say, I know what these people think, I know what those people think, and a lot of times I know what you think, but guess what? I'm going to be vulnerable enough or risky and bold enough to tell you what I think and why. And because you're able to articulate it uh, to yourself, you're then able to distill it down to the most important key factors that matter. And that's why people listen to folks who can get to the heart of the matter. Because after they've done all of this fast paddling under the water, they kind of look like that swan gliding on top and they are able to give it to you so smooth and direct that they are, they are totally uh, influential because they are able to get to the key factors of the matter, and get this. They are also uh, able to filter it through different viewpoints, different society segments, and different social mores. And by starting to develop platforms, that's why you see so many people starting to have YouTube channels and uh, form mass media, because not only are they able to do all the stuff that I just talked about, Once they're ready to put it out there, they can then have it naturally filter itself through the masses and start to figure out the society mores that are are happening Um, and, and all the different things that give them so much more information. If you've heard me before, I've always told you guys, well, not always, but I've told you recently that information is currency, knowledge is credit, and wisdom is wealth. It really is. And because you can take all of that and turn it into wisdom, you can just, it's like printing money at will. So another part of this, uh, getting to the the heart of the matter and being able to understand all this stuff and filtering it through viewpoints, society segments, and social mores is because there are some pros and cons to this. You take a risk when you start telling people what you believe, what you think, and how you stand on stuff. And 
um, it puts you in the higher probability of sometimes um, misreading the moments and making mountain out of mole hills because you're always on, you're always looking for uh, what is the blow up moment. And so you have to be kind of careful of that. But when you allow it to filter through and you're willing to take risk and chances to learn the right filters, you're going to figure out that failure is how we learn. And if you're willing to fall and fail often fear, uh, uh, fearlessly, you're still going to come out on top. So let's talk a little bit about communication and articulation, and I'm going to let you go. All right. So communicate what it means to others uh, with the intention of sparking individual exploration of the knowledge when you're doing this. Share what you stand for with a few caveats that you're able to change your mind when necessary. You know, for women, we can say it's a woman's prerogative. <laughs> we can use that defense. And then articulate it with all the tact and polish of a well-honed media trained star because how you serve it up also matters. You can be right as a... Uh, rain. And if you don't have the tact and the polish and know how to avoid the traps of mass media, then you're sunk. The best thing I can tell you is if you want to uh, start to get this highly sought after skill, in recap, you are going to have to learn how to research, how to figure out what is the object, the main theme. Start look, listening to brilliant thinkers. Look at their quotes uh, that have withstood the test of time. Start to understand what it what this means for the masses and for the person, as well as starting to look at the emotions and the power behind it. And then you'll be able to distill it through, understand it, watch it grow, and articulate it well. So guess what, y'all? My time is up. I thank you for yours. This has been Michelle Spiva, your practical priestess of wisdom with another podcast. Bye. And that's going to do it for today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with Michelle Spiva. If you like this podcast, please help us get the word out. Like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And if you really like it, please help us continue to get the word out by considering using this show's link for Amazon. So when you want to go to Amazon and you do all of your general shopping, uh, please use michellespiva.com forward slash AMZ. It's simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And this show might receive a little bit of commission that will go towards helping to further get these episodes out to you and to others. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Michelle Spiva with Wisdom Smack. Bye.